This is question two of the 2020 mechanics exam. All right. Um, Sandra dives from diving board that is 10 meters high. She finds that she can do somersaults, somersaults, um, by tucking her body in. In the tuck position, her radius can be modeled as a sphere of mass 60 kilograms and radius of 0.2 meters. Rotational inertia is given by 2 fifth MR squared. While in tuck position, she dives, rotates with a constant angular velocity of 9.2. Five six radians per second. Show that her angular momentum is uh, that. Right. So that is just going to use a formula. Um, L is equal to I omega. Um, have we got her rotational inertia? No, we totally don't. Um, so that is going to be equal to two over five m r squared omega. This is a show question, so you got to put the formula and then you got to put the working which is going to be 2 over 5 times its mass, 60 kilograms. It's quite a small person. Um, oh, that's not actually that small. Uh, times, what's a radius? 0.2 uh, squared times 9.56. And that is going to be equal to, we can see that's uh, 9.177. So 9.1776. We've got kg... It's mass, uh, meters squared, because it's radius, um, minus one, because that's radians per second. Um, yep. Uh, and now you round this up. So L is equal to, and it's literally given to you right there, um, 9.18 uh, meters, got oh, kg, damn it, kg meters squared second negative one. Um, Sweet. Right, we got next one. Just before entering the water, she straightens her body. Therefore, changing her rotational inertia, explain what effect this will have on her rotational motion. Uh, comment on her angular velocity, it'll decrease. And her rotational kinetic energy, it'll also decrease. Um, you may ignore the effects of friction while she's still in the air. It's because we always ignore air resistance. And what other friction is there? Sweet. Um, so I'll just sort of explain what's sort of going on. Um, the two formulas that you probably want to have uh, the L is equal to I omega. Um, that's up there. So when we do this, we're going to have to say that angular momentum is conserved. Cool, because there's no external torque. It's got to have that little caveat in there, um, which means if angular momentum is conserved, the rotational uh, inertia will increase because she's increasing her radius and not changing her mass. You can see that from the formula up here. That means her angular velocity is going to decrease, and that means her linear velocity is going to decrease as well because she's not going to be spinning as fast. Um, her rotational kinetic, en kinetic energy will get to that. We'll show that with I'll show that with a formula. However, the way to think about it is if you I don't know spin around on a chair and pull your arms in, you have to do work to pull your arms in because you like if you physically do it, it feels kind of hard. Like you you got to provide a force and it's over a distance. So you've got to provide work to pull your arms in, which means you're, incre you know, you're adding energy to that system. So you're increasing the rotational energy. And then you just, if you just flip that scenario backwards and run it in reverse, if you throw your arms out, I mean, that did work. It's just let go and they get thrown out. So they get moved a distance. Um, so the system loses energy. And that, that's like the intuitive way to think about it. Um, where that energy goes, I don't know goes off into the world, I suppose. Um, right, I'll pause and write it up. Right, so I just quickly had to think about that for a second. I started off with trying to write out angular uh, rotational inertia in full, so two-fifths mr squared, and then write angular velocity in, in full, which would be uh, v over r, and then you square that, but that just takes you in a full circle. It's actually the way to do it, um, is swap out i, rotational inertia, um, for angular momentum over in other words, you know, I is equal to L over omega. Um, swap that out, so you get L over omega times omega squared. Um, in other words, you get half L omega. Um, how would you know to do this? You just gotta play around with this. Um, however, this is a pretty common question. Um, I mean, like, really common question. So, like, you just sort of memorize that this is the trick to do it. Um, or if you're just like me, you go around in a circle and you think, oh wait, that didn't work. Um, and then you try something else. Um, so yeah, so as that is true, um, uh, this means that angular velocity 
has decreased, so the energy will decrease. Right, so I'll just finish it off. I <laughs> completely blitzed out for a second. Right, I just realized I went on a complete tangent because I'd written half of this and unpaused. Right, so I'll start from the start. Straining your body increases the rotational inertia as the rotational inertia to the formula, and that should be uh, 2 over 5, not half mv squared. Um, mass is a constant. Assuming conservation angular momentum, brackets no external torques. You, you gotta check that wee caveat in there because why not? The angular velocity will decrease. And I mean, I checked this wee QED that this is constant, I goes down, omega goes up. You should never really do this, but it doesn't matter that I put this in, I'll just put this in so you can graphically see it because I've said it in words. Um, if you just put this in, don't say that in words, I mean, it's a bit iffy. Normally, yeah, be it like marking papers like this before, quite often we haven't given that. Um, her rotation energy will decrease, I mean, I explained that before, um, uh, as well as, I mean, as well, this should really be because, because ek equals half i omega squared. That's a general formula that's given to you. Um, yeah, I went on a little tangent with this before. Um, you swap out i for angular uh, momentum over omega. So half uh, angular momentum times angular velocity. Angular momentum is constant. We were stated that up there. Um, so angular velocity decreases. That's the rotational kinetic energy will decreases as well. So that is that. Cool. Uh, I had all that extra room over the page. That uh, doesn't matter. Um, right. If Sandra takes how long? Two uh, point two eight seconds to strain her body just before entering the water. Her rotational inertia becomes four point eight meters or kg meters per second. Calculate her angular deceleration at uh, during this time. Oosh. Do we know? Ten meters high. What do we need to know? Um, right. So we we're trying to find angular deceleration. That equals question mark. We've got time. That equals zero point two eight. Going back up to level two. We got. We got the final. We've got, we've got an initial rotational uh, velocity. Um, do we? It's initial rotational velocity. Uh, there we go, 9.56. Um, 9.56. Um, could we figure out her final angular velocity? Well, just let me think. Um, L equals I omega final. We have a final... Angular momentum is conserved. We have her final, uh, and this is the final inertia. And this is also equal to I initial omega initial. So we can, yeah, cool. We can work this out. This is kind of convoluted. Um, equals, what does that equal? Um, initial over I final this throws back to the what, what year was this? Um, 2015 question two, the gravity elevators one. Um, it's based around a movie. Okay, I'm just not going to tell. What was it based around? Total Recall with uh, Colin Farrell. Colin Farrell. Yeah, great movie. The dude who plays um, uh, what's that Harry Potter movie? Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. He plays the bad guy, but then it's swapped out with the dude from Pirates of the Caribbean. Anyway, <laughs> it's getting on a tangent. Um, right, we'll calculate this here quickly. Um, I'll just plug and chug this. Right, I just flipped the page looking for I initial and Omega initial. I just realized they give us the angular momentum because I'm an idiot. So it's just 9.18. Double check. Angular momentum, yeah, 9.18. Um, 9. Point, oh crap, what's the unrounded value? 1776, this is why you should, 1776 uh, over 4.8 equals 1.912 uh, radians per sec, second, negative one. Um, right, and the formula that we're gonna use in your formula sheet, it's not too hard to find, final minus initial, because uh, this is the average velocity over time, and that is pretty easy peasy. What do we got? 1.92 minus, what was the initial? Uh, 9.56, 6 over 0 0.28, and that equals uh, negative 
27.285.7 uh, uh, reds per second negative 2. So in other words, alpha is equal to uh, angular acceleration negative 27.3 reds negative 2. Was a uh, right. Um, one day, Sandra observes Tapu practicing somersaults from the diving board. Tapu do, uh, does two complete somersaults in 1.25 seconds. Calculate Tapu's average angular velocity while executing the somersaults. Um, velocity equals distance, so it's angular velocity equals angular distance over time. Um, one full somersault was two pi, so it's literally just going to be four pi over, what's the time? 1.25 seconds. That's an easy question, isn't it? Tapu is a weird name, that's sacred. I mean, it literally translates to sacred, sacred in Māori. Um, yeah, I mean, this is, yeah, cool, right? I'll just quickly work that out. And we get 10.053 uh, what is it? Radians, second negative one, and I'll just chuck it down here. Equals 10.1 reds per second negative one. Cool.